We are back with the VinWiki appraisal panel, but I am not in Atlanta. I am here in Miami with John at Curated. We just shot some content for his channel. It was the right time to pass 50,000 miles on my manual LP640 coupe, and so a good time for a road trip. But today, our video is brought to you by Auto Tempest. Auto Tempest is the way that I shop for cars every single day. They allow you to search all the major listing sites at the same time. They've been a huge supporter of VinWiki now for years, Car Trek as well. So please check Auto Tempest out at the link in the description below to shop for your next car and thank them for their support of VinWiki. Now, the most requested subject of our appraisal panel has absolutely been Jay Leno. Of course, there's not an easy-to-find list of Jay Leno's cars, but over the last couple of months, with a lot of research, we have assembled what we believe is the most complete list that exists with 185 cars. He's got an unbelievable collection of a huge variety, and so we've got the list, and we'll put a link to the full list in the description. However, we obviously can't talk about 185 cars today, so just like we did with Ralph Lauren's car collection, we are going to each pick five, and we'll all appraise each of those five, and then we'll tell you how much we think all 185 cars are worth. As always, I'm joined by John Tamarian and John Fakara of Fakara Classic. Thank you guys for being with us as always. Thank you for having us as always, and it's an honor to have you at our showroom today. So. And yeah, I wish I wish <laughs> I wish I was there instead of soggy California. You guys are in sh sunny Florida. <laughs> it come is on, man, you got to come out. That's it. So I will start with my five, and the first one that I really really like. It's a car that we've talked about a lot on Vinwiki. Is the Corvette. Pratt & Miller C6 RS. It's a 2006 car. They only made seven of these. Four of them actually are black. Jay's is black as well. They were about $330,000 new. They use an 8.2 liter KTEC, naturally aspirated 600 horsepower version of the LS. And I think this one's worth about 250 grand. I think it's such a cool car. I, I think there was one on Bring a Trailer recently. There was. Um, and, and it's funny, we've talked about it in, in sort of discussions with our team of like, what is the next generation of collector cars and future cars? And this is definitely one of them. I mean, Pratt & Miller with their racing history, it is a street car. It's, it's like sort of all the stars align on this car. I'm going to say it's, it's got to be worth at least MSRP. Uh, so, you know, $300,000 plus, uh, just because I think they have a big future. There you go. Anytime that a real race team touches a car, that means something. It's got a freaking like over eight liter engine in it. And I would pay just for those sweet fender vents that it has on it. It is, it, it's an extraordinary car. It is so customized. It looks like a Corvette, but there's, it's, it's so much more underneath. I put it at least at $300,000. Super cool. Next up is a, I something that I have heard Jay considers to be his favorite car, his 1963 Chrysler turbine car. Turbine, if you're Steve Leto, we've had him on the channel to talk about the cars and how so many of them had to be destroyed. Almost all of them were destroyed. There were 55 cars built. They were never made to be consumer legal, so they were forced to destroy all of them that couldn't kind of wind up in museums. Nine are left, five run. Chrysler has two. The St. Louis Museum has one, and the Stahl Museum has one. So he's really the only wow. private owner of one of these cars. Insane. Now, in many ways, they're absolutely priceless. They're super cool. His is the orange. Almost all of them were orange. They idle at 22,000 RPM. And it runs on anything that will explode. <laughs> and it's just one of the coolest things. Now, it was not economical to build these things, obviously. But Jay tells a story about how he saw when he was 12 years old at the 1964 World Fair and just said, I've got to have them. So, I mean, they don't change hands, obviously. One did change hands recently, but in a very quiet way. I think the one that went to the Stahl Museum. But okay. I, they've always been thought that they're like three, four, five, six million bucks. I mean, I think his, as a running car, you could find somebody to pay you 10. I, I Listen, I have to agree. I think there's this, that generation, cars like the World's Fair cars and cars like these, you know, exotic Geneva show cars, manufacturers were doing just so many special, special things. We don't see that today. I, I don't think as much. I mean, we see like, you know, these show cars that were running and usable. I think that was just such a special period in time. I, I can't disagree with you, Ed. Maybe I'm going to say 8 million bucks just for the hell of it. But I think that's probably what it's worth. Who knows? Yeah. When you have such a rare car that never changes hands, who knows what they're worth? 
I mean, um, if you've ever heard one of these turbine cars run, I heard one of the turbine race cars from the 60s run. It's an amazing sound. And when they showed it around the world, they ran it on like Chanel number no. five in one country and they did all kinds of crazy stuff with them. It's a once in a lifetime purchase. I don't think it's worth 10 million. I don't know if the generation around is who wanted to buy something like that because it doesn't look, it looks like a regular car. It doesn't have like a, a real show car look to it. So I would probably put it around five at auction. It might go for more, but I don't know if, the, if it would pull 10 these days. One of the race cars that Jay has is a 1935 Delahaye 135S. This was a road legal Grand Prix level car. And you know, it's something that he actually gets out and drives. It's gorgeous. Emile Delahaye made some incredible racing cars throughout his career. And they won a ton of races in cars like this. I don't think this particular chassis was a, a hugely winning car, but it uses a pretty reliable 3.2 liter engine out of a truck. It has a way you can add oil while you're driving it. I watched Jay's video about it. And I just think it's, it's so, so special. I think it's worth about 1.4 million. I, I'm not going to disagree with that. I, I don't know much about, you know, these pre-war cars. I think they're stunning. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get in an argument with Fakara about this. Um, so I'm just going to agree with whatever your Fakara says. Fair enough. Yeah, the Del Hayes are stunning. This one doesn't have a whole lot of great history behind it, but doesn't need to. It's a Del Hay. It is certainly a car you want in a, a real good collection. And he, of course, he has one. Um, I've got it at 1.6. There you go. Now, he has six Duesenbergs, uh, but the coolest one is the Jay Walker Coupe. So this has a much more aerodynamic body. It was built at their Indianapolis facility for a local pharmaceutical tycoon. Mm -hmm. the, the body is gorgeous, the way that the car is coach built, obviously. And it was the most expensive Duesenberg ever built. 5,000 more than the next one, $25,000 new in wow. 1934. So super duper cool car. Uh, at its peak, I mean, Duesenbergs are probably on their way down like a lot of cars of that era, but I think it would have been worth four, maybe five million at one point. Today, wow. I put it at three and a quarter. I do see it, younger collectors bidding on some of these cars, you know, these pre-war cars at some of the auctions, but I think the excitement around these cars is changing. You know, you see a Countach or an F40, you know, come up on the auction block at RM and, and there's bids like, machine gun fire, yep. uh, where it, it, it feels like these pre-war cars are getting harder to sell over time. I'm going to go back about $500,000 less than you just to be uber conservative. The Duesenberg market's a, a little soft right now. I mean, they're always, they'll always be one of the great cars. This car is, if you've ever seen it, is intimidating to look at. I mean, it was definitely something you want to drive to scare the poors back in the day. But now, you know, I, I'm actually going to go under you, Ed. I'm going to say Three million is probably a number for it, um, but I don't see them sinking a whole lot more than they have. I think they've kind of settled out. That generation, the great generation that really would pay five is kind of going out of the way, but they'll never descend. This will never be a $100,000 car, that's for sure. The last one on my list is one that I'm sure would have been on all of our list. His McLaren F1, a car that he actually drives a good bit. A black car with a red accent. Doug DeMuro reviewed the car at one point. It's chassis 15, so a fairly early car. And I think he's put about 13,000 miles Incredible. on it, which is Incredible. absolutely wonderful. He's done a lot of the servicing in-house. Obviously, he's got an amazing team there at the shop. And so I put it at 16 million. I don't think it is a top tier mm -hmm. McLaren F1. Not that there really have to be tiers of a yeah. car that there's so few of, but of the 106 cars, I think it's a great driver. And I, I think he paid a million or a million five. I mean, he bought it in period when it was, you know, kind of stale yep. new inventory. And uh, so I think 16 is the number. So I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard a rumor that he had actually gone to Herb Chambers to go see a Mura SV. Hmm. And they positioned the McLaren F1 in a way. I don't know if the story is true, but I heard that he then saw the McLaren F1. They were trying to sell it because at the time they were very difficult to sell. Correct. But looking back, I mean, look what they've done. I actually would say that I believe you're light on that number. You know, I think McLaren F1s have a huge future. I, I said it in a previous video. I think it's the next 250 GTO. They're rare. They have incredible, you know, race history and it's considered one of the greatest cars of all time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably 18 to 19 million today. Um, and I, I will say that Jay Leno's provenance probably helps the car too. He's owned it for, you know, years and years and years. And the spec is incredible. Yeah. I mean, there's no arguing with an F1. There's no arguing with Jay's F1. I'm going to split the two of you and I'm going to put it at 17 million. 
So the first car on the list that I chose is a car that for years I had been saying was undervalued. Now today, they've moved a lot in price and that's the 2004 Porsche Carrera GT. Jay's talked about it as being an incredible car to drive. It's one of, I think, one of the most radical supercars ever made. It's the end of an era of analog cars. They're not the most rare cars. I mean, I think there's six, 700 cars in the U.S. that were built for the U.S. market. His is not the, it's the probably the most iconic color, the silver on terracotta. So it's not one of the paint to sample colors or, or you know, one of the more rare colors like black, yellow, or red. Um, but I still think regardless, it's got to be worth at least 1.6 million uh, it's around probably something like 10,000 miles, but it was Jay Leno's Carrera GT. And you can always say that, you know, it being his adds real value. Here we try to talk about what the actual car is worth. I am a little bit bearish on Carrera GTs in general. I mean, they certainly over the last 18 months have exploded in value, but I said 1.4 just because I think that that's about where these cars are going to settle in to a million for a wheat car, a million five for a premium car on the real long term time frame. Yeah, I agree with you Ed, on this one. Um, there's four of them coming up for sale later this month at the auctions. So we'll really find out what they're at. Um, but I would say a solid car like his is about 1.5 million. So the next car, I think this is what makes Jay so special as a collector is he has such a diversity and it's the Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing that he has, which I think is just so, so cool because it has original paint. And I know sometimes I get, you know, some people give me a hard time saying a survivor car, it has patina, but they're only original once. And there's something that speaks to me every time that I get in a car with an original paint original interior and it's like it tells a whole different story than a fully restored car i love fully restored cars we sell fully restored cars i restore cars but they're only original ones his car is red i guess jay found it basically rotting in a trailer in the desert somewhere i'm gonna say you know 300 so going prices for a little bit came down um they were like a million to a million four the past year has been wild for 300 SLs, uh, both Roadsters and Goings. I think a numbers matching Goings today uh, with this type of patina is got to be a $2 million car. I agree. It's, it's such a great story, the way they resurrected this car in-house and did so much to it. And there are so many cars like that in Jay's collection where he has found a car, identified a car, and been able to take the story all the way to completion. I don't know that it's quite $2 because I think that is probably reserved for these, like, you know, totally top-tier, ultra-unique color combinations, things like that. So I said one eight, but still tons. The idea of any car being original, um, if, you, if you ever can touch one of these original unrestored cars, there's something really special about them because they're only original once. Once you restore it, you've washed all that stuff away. And this one's just a, a perfect example of an original car. And I love it. And I think, to Marion, we're going to agree on a price here and we're going to both say $2 million. So there is no denying that Jay is a massive Lamborghini fan. And, and I think he's always talked about loving Lamborghini more than Ferrari. I don't even think he owns a Ferrari at this point. Uh, so, so, and he's always been a huge Lamborghini Mura fan. And this next car is such a great story because it sort of describes just exactly how the car collector community was at one point. And Jay actually got this car for free. And the car tells such a special story. It was a, a Lamborghini Miura P400 uh, that was purchased new from the Bob Estes uh, Lamborghini distributor in California by the one and only Dino Dean Martin of, of the Rat Pack and, and fame. And it was actually purchased for his, his son who would drive the car to high school. So incredible, incredible story. Uh, I don't know the exacts of the story, but he apparently was hot rodding a little bit, uh, cracked the oil pan or the transaxle, uh, and the car sat around in disrepair. Jay was buying a, a bunch of cars out of a collection or something like that, and the guy he asked the guy, what's under that cover? And basically said, it's a mirror, and he goes, hey, if you want it, you can take it. Um, so he got the car for free. Uh, it's a original yellow with blue car, so very, very rare. Incredible color. And Jay obviously fixed it and drives it and enjoy it. And that's another thing about Jay is he's actually a mechanic himself. So really, really commend him. But he loves his Muras. We'll talk about another Mura he has as well. I'm going to put this car all day 
um, at 1.7 to 1.8. Um, I, I'm personally getting excited about it because it's like Dean Martin, Jay Leno. I mean, the history is phenomenal, but, but let's call it 1.8. A lot of old Lamborghinis have great celebrity ties, everything like that, but I mean, it doesn't get any cooler than Dean Martin's Mira. <laughs> that transacted for no money at one point. I think the story adds a solid... 20% to the value. So I'm going to say 2 million. But if you were going to own one that wasn't an SV, how do you not want this above everything else? I'm a huge fan of the Rat Pack. I always have been. And if I had to have a Mura, I would kill to have this thing. And yeah, I, I agree with you, Ed. If the Dean Martin story for me, I would pay an extra 20% all day long, $2 million. And the next car is his Mura S. And it's talking about the Rat Pack. I'm a huge fan as well, Fakara. So Mr. Frank Sinatra also was a well-known Mira owner. He actually had an S with shag orange carpet. Um, that car had traded a few years ago. Incredible car, orange car, just like the orange S of Jay Leno. And listen, S's were are, are very rare when you compare them to the P400s. P400 Mira were the, I would say, a little bit more crude. They were sort of developed over time. A lot of the cars had, you know, roll-up windows. They didn't have chrome trim, where the S got the chrome trim. It got the electric windows. They got AC, vented disc brakes as production went on. Uh, so S's historically bring more than a P400, less than an SV. But I, I think this is a phenomenal car. It's a late S, so it's a 69 car. Uh, and I'm going to put this car at probably 1.95, 1.9 million. That makes perfect sense. And certainly you're the guy to speak to that. If I'm buying a car, I'm going to buy it for the story rather than it being a fundamentally slightly better 1960s car. So I'm going to put it 20% back of where I had <laughs> the Dean Martin car and say 1.6. So my 20% just drops it back to what it should be. So I think they're both worth $2 million, but... The 20% bump was for Dean Martin on the on the yellow one. And then the last car is the Blastoline Special. Now, this is a complete oddball. It's a famous part of Jay's collection. Uh, it was built in 2001 by a famous hot rod uh, in, in sort of metal crafter, Randy Grubb. It's got a tank-powered engine, uh, a Greyhound bus Allison transmission. Absolutely insane. This is only something Jay Leno or somebody like that would build. Uh, I think it looks incredible as well. I mean, it's so masculine. It's so cool. It's really hard to value this. If you take out Jay Leno's name, how do you put a value on this? I think one day, if Jay were to ever sell, which I doubt would happen, you know, this car is synonymous with his character as well. So you have to add, you know, his name to this car. So in my opinion, it could be a $700,000 to a million dollar car. A lot of these really, really special hot rods can demand that type of premium depending upon who the builder is. Uh, but, but for argument's sake, let's say $800,000. Exactly. I think there's there's no more Jay Leno car than that. It's gigantic. <laughs> it makes all the crazy noises in the world. I I said five hundred grand. Generally, when you spend a ton of money building a hot rod or modifying a car, customizing a car, you're talking in pennies on the dollar coming back. And you will I can't, never get it back. <laughs> exactly. I can't imagine what was spent to build a thing. Uh, limitless. But I, I think if it was really going to sell, apart from Jay's provenance, I think it's half a million bucks. Yeah, I've had the, the privilege of actually seeing and sitting in, I never got to drive some of the other Blastoline cars. Um, wow. they, they are handmade cars, but it's beyond like just building a car. They are artists and they put so much thought into every bolt head and every, where everything is on it. They're extraordinary works of art to begin with. Then you've got, it's a tank <laughs> engine car that drives on the street. Then you got Jay Leno and there's only one of them and there will always be one of them. Blastoline builds one car and they move on to a whole different concept. I think that this ever changed hands in a heartbeat, some maniac would drop a million dollars on it without breathing hard. There you go. You're probably right. All right, what were your five, Fakara? Jay's collection to me is, is really about how eclectic it is, how, he covers all the weird little niche corners of the car collecting uh, uh, market. and But I'm going to start with a very, very conservative one. I'm going to start off with his Type 51 Bugatti. I did a video on Leon Dure. He drove a Miller 91 in Indy. Uh, the connection between those is that 
The Miller 91, he sold three of them to Bugatti when he was out in Europe. And Bugatti took that engine, the amazing straight eight supercharged dual overhead cam engine from the Miller 91, and they reverse engineered it and built the Bugatti Type 51. Now the 51 came after the 35. And there's a lot of numbers flying around here. But 35 was a really successful race car. By the time the 51 came along, the state-sponsored cars of Alfa Romeo defeated it. And then the state-sponsored the state cars from Mercedes, the auto unions and the Mercedes-Benz, uh, the German cars, they crushed everybody. So Bugatti's days as a great race car were over. Doesn't mean this car is anything less than being amazing. It is a cornerstone of any collection to have one of these Bugattis, to drive one. They're small and nimble and light and powerful and they're fantastic. Um, I, 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 just, I just love it. I love that that can sit next to something like a, a Volkswagen Bug in his collection. But I put this car at $3.2 million. There you go. That's, I mean, it's definitely special. I love your story about DeRay or whatever his real name was. But uh, <laughs> that I put 275 on this one. I'm going to agree with that. I, I'm going to say, uh, you know, two seven. <laughs> so coming up next, we're going to go to the other end of the value scale. Uh, another car I love of his is his Corvair Yanko Stinger uh, by Chevrolet. The, of course, the Corvair was the car that was, you know, unsafe at any speed and, and Nader went after it. And General Motors built those for more years than they should have just to prove that it was a good car. Don Yanko got a hold of him. He was kind of the Carroll Shelby of General Motors, and he built, his first cars were Corvairs. He eventually moved into Camaros and trick them out, giant engines. Yeah. This Yanko Stinger is a stage two. They built one, two, three, and four stages. They were all built as to be race cars, you know, SCCA type stuff. Uh, they were, you know, 200 horsepower or even more. They had the great air-cooled flat six. A lot of people call them the America Porsche, but it, it really isn't. Uh, I think one of the, most, the prettiest cars that General Motors built in the 60s was that second generation Corvair. This car, regular Corvairs, 10, 15 grand for a nice sorted car. I think this one, it sits at about 85,000. If it were a stage three or four, it'd probably be breaking six figures. I figured, you know, it has to be a hundred grand just because it has such a great story. It's such a unique thing. They are so rare. There's got to be somebody out there that will write a six-figure check for it. I agree with you. It's it's interesting, Fakar. I always learn something from you. I did not know that Yenko started building Corvairs. There, he's he, in my eyes. He was always known for Camaros and right. <laughs> so incredible history. I'm going to say a hundred thousand dollars as well. All right, my next car is, and now I'm going to do a Lamborghini. I know we already did Muras, and you guys are into kind of Diablos and things like that. But of course, I'm into the weird Lamborghinis. Uh, this is a car that I wanted desperately as a kid, and I, I could have bought one for $10,000 when I was in college, and I couldn't afford it or work on the V12. And that's the four-seater front-engine V12 Espada. They were designed by Gandini, who designed the Mura and the, the Countach. This was his take on a uh, four-seat GT car. Uh, people either love them or hate them. I love it. I think this one is a Series 2, which I think is the sweet spot in between. With a 4-liter V12 up front, room for, literally, I, I fit in it. You can fit four guys my size inside of it, although it doesn't look that way. They're really cool. I think I think they, you know, it's unfortunate they're not worth more, but I, I guess it's fortunate they are not worth more because I want to buy one someday. His was restored uh, cosmetically and mechanically, so it's probably one of the nicest out there. It's his car. Uh, he drives it, and uh, I know I'm pushing up a spot of prices by saying this, but I think that his car would probably sell for about 175000 The Espada is such a cool car. I mean, it was such a statement from Lamborghini when it first came out. The original prototype was the Marzal, and it, the doors came up. It actually had a glass roof. I mean, it was just completely insane, and, and that's Sort of the special factor, this this unique factor of Lamborghini is always pushing the boundaries of everything. Um, I love Espadas. I think they're great. I don't buy them because you could restore one for more than what the car is actually worth. So if, if you restore an Espada, you have to be a very, very passionate individual. You have to really love the car because you could spend two, three hundred thousand and that's what the car is worth. Uh, a series... Two is probably one of the more desirable. It was Series 1, Series 2, Series 3. Series 3 have these horrible, you know, bumperettes. The interior is different. I, I love the Series 1 and Series 2s. 
maybe one day I'll get one. I don't know. It's just so cool. I agree with you, John. They're, they're, they're awesome. I'm going to say it's probably worth a little more if it's been fully restored. I recently saw a, 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 a junk sell for like 130, 140. So it feels like the Espada market is heating up. Um, even if it's not by much, but, but I, I'm going to say 200,000, uh, for a series two fully restore, restored Espada. My gut was 150, but I think your logic is entirely sound. I mean, it, you know, uh, it's other than a Gallardo, it's probably the cheapest Lamborghini that you could actually buy. And it's one that you could take anywhere and guys like us just go nuts over. And so, you know, you can't go wrong, but I'll, I'll stick to my 150. To... All right. My, my next car is another one of his oddball cars and probably one if you drove into a Cars and Coffee. Nobody would ever have seen one in their lives. It's the Monte Verde High Speed 375S. Nowadays, a hybrid is a combustion engine and an electric motor. Back then, a hybrid was a European car, and they would get these beautiful bodies made by Touring or Bertone, and they put them on a chassis, but they couldn't afford to build their own engines like Ferrari could. So they would just come to the United States, they'd pick up a Chrysler 440 and just plunk it in there, and they'd have 375 horsepower. That's the reason this is called a 375S. And it's a beautiful body. So I think it's a really attractive car. Um, it's a it's a supercar that you could then work on at the local garage. I mean, literally the whole drivetrain is American, so there's nothing terribly expensive about working on that. You just have these gorgeous bodies and a really affordable and huge grunt from a big American V8. They didn't make many of these, and uh, they're all handmade. So I put this at uh, two hundred and seventy-five thousand. This is a car I had no real knowledge of. I certainly looked at it. It is gorgeous. I said two hundred fifty thousand. It's gorgeous. I think, you know, they're so cool. Monteverde built so many interesting, wacky cars. I think they even built an SUV uh, at, at one point. I will say, I would feel that if, if I was buying that car, it would be very difficult to resell. Right. You would have to find an impulse buyer, someone that really loved it. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more modest and say $200,000. The reason I, I think this is worth a little bit more, it was one of four that was built with a manual transmission. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Cool. Well, there you go. Anything manual transmission is worth double. Abs or more. All right. My final car, uh, and, I, and I had to do one of these because I love the fact that Jay's into steam. Like, it is, his steam cars are so cool. And he's got a wide selection of them. And back in the day, most people forget that cars didn't make that much power at the turn of the century. And, you know, a, a, a car with 5, 10, 15, 20 horsepower, that's what cars had. And these steam cars were putting out 20, 25, 30 horsepower, which was phenomenal kind of speed back in the day. So I picked his 1906 Stanley Steamer, the Vanderbilt Cup car. And uh, this was a, technically a, a steam race car. The Vanderbilt Cup was held out on Long Island, New York, and it was the race in the United States. It was the premier car race back in the day before Indy came along and took it over. This is what you went and did, and they bring drivers over from France, and, uh, and it was a huge international affair. Stanley built this car. If, you should take a good look at it. It's, it's actually really cool looking. And Jay uh, went in, of course, he's a hot rodder, and hot rodded a steam car. He put in a bigger boiler. It goes faster. I mean, this is something, this is a steam car from a hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago, that can do freeway speeds in California. How to put a value on these? They don't exchange hands all that much. It is an ancient technology. It would require a very special person to own it. But uh, you know, if I were wealthy and I could get hands of a not Vanderbilt Cup car, I easily drop 250, 300 thousand dollars just to fire up that boiler and drive down the road, puff and steam, just amazing. I love that Jay has become really the modern champion of these steam cars. I, I love it anytime somebody finds a car like that that resonates so much with them that yeah. they really take it upon themselves to evangelize the, their love for it. And so he has certainly done that with his steam cars. You know. I, Look, who's going to use the thing? It's it's a museum style thing, but it's super cool that you could. I said 150 grand. I agree. I I think I again. I, I you have to appreciate Jay's ingenuity and his passion for this sort of all these little eccentric 
uh, you know, pieces of automotive history. It's is this wide spectrum of cars, and it's just so, so, so cool. And I think that's the beauty of car collecting, and we could go on and on and on, is the passion that, you know, if you see a cool bike or you see anything, you know, we're gearheads, so we appreciate it all. Um, that being said, I, I think, again, it's, it's probably something that's worth 150000 so those are the 15 cars that we chose to focus on. Like I said, there are 185 cars that we've identified as part of his collection. You know, to value it is, is honestly going to be a pretty shocking thing, I think, to most of our audience. Because totaling it all up, these were most of the really, really big cars in the collection. And so my total was only $83 million. I think you're maybe a touch light, um, but I agree with you. You know, uh, he's got this wide array of stuff that, that is very, very unique. Um, but I think, you know, if, if he ever did decide to sell the collection, I'm sure that there's someone that would pay $100 million to say they got Jay Leno's collection as a whole. And I actually heard that rumor years ago that someone was interested in buying his complete collection as a whole. You could create a museum. You could create a business from that. I don't know if it's worth really $100 million, but right. there is something to say about his collection as a whole. It's, I mean, they make Hot Wheels models now and, and toys. There's a TV show. There's this, I think it's more than a collection. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a brand icon. Uh, so I'm going to say $100 million. This collection is eclectic, but there's also a lot of cars. Like you know, There's a Volga in there. It's like There's a lot of $10,000 cars in there. Uh, I think collectively, street value, the collection's probably around $90 million. But uh, I think you're right, John. I think if this was Jay's collection, if these are Jay's cars, uh, you know, $100 million isn't out of the question. And they're all, you know, the, a lot of these cars are still going up in value. Um, so just that collection alone would be a wise buy. But the Jay Leno collection, at least for the next 30, 40, 50 years, why people remember who he is, $100 million is not out of the question. And the only reason I say only $83 million is that when we looked at a $600 million value on Ralph Lauren's collection, a lot of people were like, no way is that the most valuable collection in the U.S. because certainly Jay Leno's is more. And that's one of the most impressive things about it is, you know, who he is as an enthusiast and who he is as a brand has become so iconic, so significant. And honest, I think he probably only has 10 to 15 million dollars in purchase price in the cars because they've gone up in value so so very much and so that's what i love is that every car's got a story and he is the man so we'll be back soon with another installation of the vinwiki appraisal panel thank you both of the johns for joining me as always and thank you to auto tempest for supporting this series check them out now at the link in the description below and we'll be back soon